Hello everyone, my name is Kamran Habib. I manage a team of amazing solution architects supporting our customers here in the UAE. Welcome to the first video in the series of Build on UAE. Build on UAE will be a series of educational videos where you can learn from AWS experts, customers, and partners on how they are building on the UAE region to meet their and their customers' business needs. On August 29th, 2022, AWS launched a he region here in the UAE. What does the UAE region mean? And what does it mean for you as our customers running business in the UAE or in the Middle East? I hope to explain this to you today before you start building on the UAE region. However, before we look at the UAE region and dive deep into it, let's briefly go back in time. About five years before AWS launch, which was almost 17 years ago, Amazon made a decision to expand the highly scalable web application, Amazon.com, the Amazon.com infrastructure beyond the single data center in Seattle. Several operational near misses made it clear that Amazon needed an infrastructure strategy that allowed us to run our critis critical systems out of several data centers. One of the leading ideas at the time was to move the systems to two data centers, one on the west coast of the United States and one the other on the east coast of the United States. This was the availability model used by most corporations at that time, and it is still very common today. While the idea seems compelling at a high level, it loses its charm when we get into the, the details. Amazon.com is a highly stateful, real-time application that needs to be up to date and consistent for all customers using the website. And when you're keeping the data in sync in real time, latency does matter. And we saw that round trip time for data centers on two different coasts was up to 70 milliseconds, which was not work for Amazon.com. Like all good engineering challenges, we have a trade off. The further apart you put your data centers, the less likely they will be impacted by a single event. On one, ex on one extreme, if you put your data centers across the street, uh, it's pretty easy to think about things that might impact both data centers. Common things like power outages and lightning strikes, or less common things like flood. But as you get further apart, the probability of these sorts of natural disasters does go down. Once you get to kilometers of separation, even large natural disasters are unlikely to have significant impact on both data centers. Now you can keep on going, but after a while you need to start imagining some absurdly low probabilities of disasters, things that haven't happened in our lifetimes to imagine simultaneous impact. And of course you add latency and there's no physics yet that would make the speed of light faster. So here I've added some latency estimates of latent for latency. So the conclusion we came is that for high availability application, there's a golden mean zone, a right balance for your infrastructure. So in conclusion, between all availability zones in a region, we target a maximum latency of round trip of about one to two millisecond. But we don't use an exact range at varies based on the geographical geographic regions. Also for the UAE region, we carefully assessed the locations of the data centers and made sure they are in different flood areas and have different electricity providers, etc. So now let's look into how AWS regions are built and how AWS services are built. First thing you look at the global infrastructure. The AWS global infrastructure, the cloud spans 99 availability zones right now within 31 geographic regions around the world. I'll go into a little bit more into detail on availability zones and regions a little later. With announced plans for 15 more availability zones and five more AWS regions in Canada, Israel, Malaysia, New Zealand, and Thailand. Each AWS region is completely independent. Every data center, availability zone, and AWS region is interconnected via purpose-built highly available and low latency private global network infrastructure. The network is built on global fully redundant parallel 100 gigabytes of metro fiber network that is linked via transoceanic cables across the Atlantic, 
the Pacific and the Indian Oceans, as well as the Mediterranean, Red Sea, and South China Seas. We also have 115 direct connect locations where you can connect to AWS Backbone from your on-premises data center. You can do that already now in UAE as well. Our global monitoring detects fiber failure paths and reroutes traffic. In most cases, even if this happens, the clients or applications don't feel it happening if they have built in a well-architected manner. AWS runs its own, net, own dark fiber network to connect its availability zones. This privately owned backbone only carries Amazon traffic. The standard cable contains 6,912 strands around a steel core. The steel core provides strength and also allows for tracing cable using magnometers. So if you think about it, 100 gigabytes, 160 channels, 6,912 strands, you get up to 110.6 petabytes of traffic, right? So uh, there's, a, there's a speech by James Hamilton on goes into much more details on our global network and how we built it and the challenges faced on YouTube if you search for it. So we talked about the global infrastructure. We talked about how it's connected. Now let's look at what we talk about the region. AWS has a concept of a region, which is a physical location around the world where we cluster our data centers. We call each group of logical data centers an availability zone. Each AWS region consists of multiple isolated and physically separated AZs within a geographic area. The region in UAE consists of three availability zones as well. Each availability zone has independent power, cooling, and physical security. As pointed out before, our AZs, our availability zones, are physically separated by a meaningful distance, many kilometers, from many other AZs, from any other AZs, although all are within 100 kilometers or 60 miles of each other, just to, just to keep in within that latest requirement that I had talked about earlier. So each availability zone starts with a single data center, and most of them grow to several DCs according to capacity needs. Each availability zone is a partition of an AWS infrastructure that is engineered to provide complete independence from any availability zone, as I mentioned before. Due to that fact, an AZ is a fault domain in itself. Customers who use multi-availability zone designs can reach very high availability level. In UAE, customers can do that while storing data, uh, storing all their data inside the country. And this is why Gartner recognizes AWS's approach to regions and availability zones as a recommendation for organizations that want to run enterprise workloads with high availability. Let's go down another level to the data centers that make up the availability zones. We are talking about data centers with a lot of capacity. We measure the capacity of the data centers in electricity capacity or in tens of megawatts, usually up to 32 megawatts. In fact, this means that AWS data centers contain tens of thousands of servers and this scale is in the UAE as well. We have regions that have up to six availability zones with dozens of data centers, each up to 300,000 servers. So the model of availability zones requires a network that will allow very high throughput and low latency. So let's look at the UAE region and the physical network inside. So jumping into the UAE region. If you log into the AWS console, you can access the UAE region by going into ME Central 1, choosing the UAE region. So if you look at the UAE region, in addition to the availability zones that I talked about, the three availability zones that we have, each, re each region has two separate DCs called transit centers as well. What is the purpose of these transit centers? The purpose is to connect the region to the worldwide AWS backbone, the internet to the networks in the same country, and in our case, to the networks in UAE. The transit centers are completely self-contained with full redundancy. To provide a high availability of network between AZs, we embed a lot of capa network capacity. And network capacity access, this is a network engineer's best friend. So availability zones and transit centers are connected by metro fiber, which provides enough capacity and resilience to deal with any fiber or AZ failure, which allows our customers to run applications in any AZ 
even in the event of a network failure. So as I mentioned, we launched the AWS UAE region in August, August 29, 2022. It, it, it is the second region in the Middle East after Bahrain. Globally, it was the 27th new region that was launched and brought the number of availability zones for us to 87. As I said, now we have 31 since that time. At launch, we had 50 services and up to more than 100 services now. UAE is already home to two CloudFront Edge locations, and it also has two AWS Direct Connect locations as well. You can look at the region services guide for more details and accurate information on this. So if you look at the AWS services that we have in the UAE region, we have services across analytics, application integration, compute, containers, databases, developer tools, migrations, IoT, machine learning, management governance, uh, network and content delivery, security, identity, appliance, storage. As I mentioned, more than 101 plus services right now are available. You can go to our AWS uh, regional table, availability service, for the latest up-to-date region, uh, region information and the services that are available. But what does it mean, the AWS region in the UAE, what does it mean to the UAE? What is the AWS investment in the UAE? We, AWS, have invested up to eight, 20 billion, 20 billion dirhams or $5 billion in the region. That's, this, going, this is going to impact up to $41 billion uh, dirhams worth uh, in the UAE economy and will produce 6,000 jobs as related to the AWS economy amongst many other things, many other benefits that are there. Now, let's talk about high mobility and disaster recovery within the AWS services. Our, our CTO, Werner Vogels, is known to have said a very famous statement. He said, everything fails all the time. And this is what we tell our customers. There is no guarantee that everything will keep on working. So when you're designing your enterprise gate workload, you have to keep in mind that anything can fail at any time. And you need to build things anticipating these failures. As I mentioned, we have looked at multiple levels of redundancy when we looked at building our region, our availability zones, and our global infrastructure. We provide component level resiliency at every layer, at storage, at servers, at network. I talked already about the multi-AZ resiliency where we have at least three availability zones in a region. We have different risk profiles, sub-millisecond latency, managed services that we provide, and then for really high impact workload, you have the multi-regions of resiliency. We have 31 regions, as I mentioned, with 99 availability zones, where you can have data transfer, backup services, and global services available. So cloud offers new options for disaster recovery. Disaster recovery on on-premises often means thinking about what happens to your data center, if your data center or parts of it fail due to a natural, technical, or human disaster. If your risk analysis for on-premises was based on failure of a single data center, you can think of using a single AWS region like UAE to mitigate against the same level of risk on AWS. If your risk analysis was based on losing multiple data centers, you may want to think about utilizing multiple AWS regions to mitigate against the same level of risk. Beyond the region, the cloud provides additional benefits. You can exchange your CapEx with OpEx costs, and you can do pay-as-you-go model. You don't need any upfront investment. You only need to pay for what you use and provision your resources on demand as you see fit. You have the scalability, scalable scale on demand with your data and organizational growth. You can test, test in separate accounts, test in separate regions, availability zone, and you don't have to disrupt your production applications. You can automate the testing and do as many times as you need. And you, you have a managed infrastructure. Lower, lower your IT management overhead. Many services that AWS has built are automatically replicated in the three available, at least the three availability zones I mentioned, such as our serverless, computing, analyst, storage, IoT, ML services. So DR, data residency, and high availability is built in at the same price. And in order to connect your, your corporate data centers or your, or your colo facilities to AWS, we offer multiple, multiple options as well. 
And you can use this for your data residency as well. You can have, you can access applications through your public internet. You can have IPsec, uh, IPsec or SD-WAN tunnel, or you can have a connect to your private dedicated links with AWS Direct Connect. What about security and compliance? A very important topic. AWS infrastructure regions meet the highest level of security, compliance, and data protection. ISO 9001, ISO 27001, and other ISO and CSA star level two certification and PCI DSS are already available for us, for us to use. And these are available in a service we call AWS Artifact that you can see the details and reports on of it. For the UAE region, AWS is licensed by the, by, by the, by the desk as tier one SaaS provider and to, uh, through a third party audit. Similarly with the TDRA and ADA, we have demonstrated compliance as well. Again, more details on these reports are available in your AWS console by going to the AWS artifact where you can read these reports in detail. Sustainability is a big topic. UAE is going to host COP28 here this year in 2023. So sustainability is a big, big, uh, big, big impact topic for our customers. As I, as I talked about earlier, we have, we have done a very detailed study on economic impact for the UAE. And in that, we also talk about the impact of sustainability as well. When it comes to sustainability in 2019, Amazon and, and Global Optimism, Optimism co-founded the Climate Pledge, a commitment, a commitment to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2040, 10 years ahead of the Paris Agreement. The Climate Pledge is joined by cross-sector community of companies and organizations working together to address the climate crisis and solve the challenge of decarbonizing our economy. To date, over 400 companies across 36 countries have joined the climate, the climate Pledge. As the first signatory, Amazon is on path to power its operation with 100% renewable energy by 2025 five years ahead of its original target of 2030. Amazon is currently the world's largest corporate purchaser of renew renewable energy. And in 2021, we reached 85% renewable energy across our business, with more than tw 20 gigawatts of renewable energy production capacity or, uh, across our global portfolio. The results of several studies conducted by 451 Research show that AWS infrastructure is 3.6 times more energy efficient than the median of US enterprise data center, and up to five times more efficient than enterprise data centers in Europe and Asia Pacific. Approximately two thirds of this advantage is attributable to combination of more energy efficient server population and much higher server utilization that we have. Again, AWS provides our customers with several tools to help them meet their sustainability goals. For example, in your AWS console, the AWS customer carbon footprint tool calculates the carbon emissions generated from AWS usage, enabling customers to incorporate their AWS carbon footprint into their own sustainability reporting. Another example is the newly added sustainability pillar of the AWS Well Architecture Framework. The AWS Well Architect Framework looks at the best, the, uh, the best practices that we as architects use in building applications across operational excellence, security, reliability, performance and efficiency, cost optimization, and now uh, scalability as, as sustainability as well. So this helps organizations develop a better understanding of the impact of their workloads measure progress towards their IT sustainability targets and model where they can directly measure. So AWS Middle East UAE region gives you more choice and more flexibility. It provides you reduced latency. It provides you ability to keep your data in the UAE, security and compliance from uh, local, local, uh, local national bodies, multi-AZ region, and AWS direct connectivity, direct connect and private connectivity for your, for, your, uh, for your data centers. So let's start building on the AWS Middle East UAE today. Thank you. Thank you.